So my daughter Brady decided this year she wanted to grow her own garden for herself and my grandson Henderson. So in this video, I'm going to show you an easy beginner gardener setup that won't cost a lot of money, doesn't require a whole lot of space, and will give you a wonderful spot to grow vegetables for your family. So I think for beginner gardeners, a great way to start out is using raised garden beds like this set of two that I purchased off Amazon. They were very reasonably priced, they were quick to put together, and you can grow a whole lot in a very small space like this. But then Brady decided she also wanted to do some potatoes, so we decided that we would rototill up a spot in her backyard that actually used to be a garden space from the previous renter. So we got the rototiller and we rototilled it up and decided to place it in between the two garden beds and it would make a good spot for potatoes. So to help save on some of the costs of filling these raised garden beds, you want to start by trying to find twigs and boards and other bulky material that you can fill the base of your garden beds with. So we scrounged up some large tree branches and some old boards, and that starts off as a very good layer that will slowly break down over time. So we got both of them filled up and then from there brady had a couple bags from the previous fall of leaves that were you know all broken down and dried out in these bags so we just ripped them open and that makes also a really great filler in garden beds so if you have a stash of leaves or grass clippings stuff like that will make a good filler in the bottom part of your garden beds these garden beds were about 12 inches deep so we have a foot of space that we need to fill up so after we had done the leaves and the twigs we used uh, the water hose to spray it down which is a good way to kind of compress it a bit to make sure you don't have a whole bunch of air pockets in there and then we took a lot of the dirt that was around from the garden space around these bins and tossed a bunch of that in and that was a good filler to add in as well. So if you have some old potting soil or native uh, soil around your yard, that's a good filler also to use as the base in your garden beds. So we had probably about five or six inches of space left. So we thought it was a good time to now add some of the bagged potting soil that we purchased. And we started off by adding two of these bags to this raised garden bed and spread it around just to see if we thought that was gonna be enough for planting in. You wanna make sure you have about six inches of soil to do your planting in, depending on what you're planting, but that's usually a good um, measurement to go by for setting up your garden beds. So after we spread out those two bags of potting soil, we decided that a little more would probably be best. We had another large bag that we were hoping to use in the other garden bed, but we decided to add this to the first garden bed just to make sure there was enough uh, topsoil or potting soil on the top to have a really good base to plant everything into. I then remembered I had brought a container of peat moss also to mix in with the, the potting soil, which I usually do in my own garden beds. So we dumped a bunch of that on top of this potting soil and just worked it in ourselves. So adding some peat moss or coconut core into your potting soil really helps absorb and retain water and prevent compaction of the soil. And after we got that mixed in really well, broke up all the lumps, mixed it in, it was pretty much ready for planting. So then in the background there, you can see that we were starting to get our holes dug for the potatoes. We spaced them out so that we could plant 16 hills of potatoes, which was just a nice number for Brady and her son to have. And it filled up the space in between the two garden beds. So once the garden bed was ready, then the fun part begins of what you just want to plant in each of these garden beds. And there is a lot of space there when you get putting in your seeds that you can really jam in a lot of things. We decided to do some peas at the one end and then I started planting some red onions in the middle. And then at the end, we thought it'd be a good spot to put in a couple zucchini plants. So her and Henderson planted three of them at the end. We thought these would be good at the end because they, as they grow big, they can kind of hang over the edge and not take up too much space in the bed. 
So here's what it looks like after we planted up the one garden bed. We got 16 hills of potatoes. They used the marigolds to mark the rows. Henderson got to bring some of his uh, artwork into the garden. This one, we uh, ran out of soil, so we didn't finish planting it up today. Uh, Henderson also had a sunflower that he grew at daycare to put into the garden. So this is gonna be a really nice space for them to look after. I would say if you really don't want to be doing a lot of weeding, which you may be doing with the potatoes that, you know, just sticking with the two raised garden beds is a great way to start a garden. Like I said, you can get a lot of things planted in very small spaces and it's very easy to look after. So the following week, we got some more potting soil into the second bed and we got some peppers, some cucumbers and carrots planted in the second raised garden bed. So a couple weeks later I came back and my grandson Henderson gave me a tour of the garden and showed me everything that was starting to grow. So show me what you got growing in your garden now. I got peas. Peas? Yeah. What is this here? Onions. Onions? Yeah, green. Onions. Do you remember planting these zucchinis? You put the seed in there. Do you remember doing that? Yeah. And this is Little ant. There's an ant, and what's this? Mm, the, I don't know. That's dill. Yeah. How many potatoes did you get? Mm, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice. They're looking really good. Yeah, and, and look at my look at it. It's, it's kind of kind of bigger. It and what is that? Um, it's my plant. Do you know what kind of plant it is? Yeah. Do you remember the name? Yeah. What is it? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Sunflower? Yeah. It's going to get really big and get a really big flower on it, hopefully. Yeah. So the cucumbers and carrots are just starting to poke through. You can't really see them right now, but we have a couple peppers coming. Everything is looking good. So as a beginner gardener, you really want to be careful that you don't grow more than you think you can manage. It's very easy to get planting a lot of things and then when the weeds start coming, it gets a little harder to, to look after. Raised garden beds are great for that reason where it's very easy to pull weeds and keep them under control. Whereas if you are going to start an in-ground garden, especially where you had grass growing and weeds were growing, you really have to keep on top of it to keep those weeds under control. So it all depends on how much time and effort that you want to put into your garden. So that's why I think these small raised garden beds are a great way for beginner gardeners to start. They don't take up a lot of space. They don't cost a lot of money. And if they are, if you are living on a rental property like my daughter is, if you move, you can take them with you. So that is another great thing about these garden beds. So I hope you enjoyed watching me help my daughter and grandson get their first garden space going. And if you haven't started gardening yet, hopefully this will inspire you to try gardening, even if you're growing a few vegetables and herbs in a few pots or doing some raised garden beds like we are doing here. Just being able to grow your own food is just a wonderful hobby. And I hope that my daughter and grandson get to enjoy a lot of their homegrown vegetables this summer and fall. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.